<laughs> Hello? Hi, good morning. I'm Christian Friend. Hey, uh, Sad, how are you? Yesterday, I didn't know I'm not what happened to you. You left. Yes, I had, a, I had some family members actually coming over. All so right. I had to sleep. So, what do you think about what happened? What do you think? Did you decide to leave Islam or not yet? Well, I, I, I kind of actually uh, spent the whole uh, day yesterday um, yeah. after my um, family left and I actually had a little bit of research. And I do have a little bit of questions, if that's okay. Sure, go ahead. Okay. All right. So the first thing was, obviously, I kind of actually mentioned about, um, I, I kind of actually mentioned Sam Shimon, which I shouldn't have because it's actually um, your channel. But he mentioned in the actual uh, chat yesterday, he said that Calvinists are not, uh, you know, he used to be a Calvinist. So are Calvinists Christians? Perfect. I can be Christian and I have wrong understanding. But that will not make me not a Christian. Why? Listen, listen. Hold on. Let me answer. Let me answer you. You asked me a question, right? Okay. I the the, the Christian is someone who believe in Jesus. A human being during his life he go through a process. A process what? Sometimes you are stupid. Second day you wake up you are oh yesterday it was stupid. I should not do that. You know. So God is all merciful. He give you all the chance. But the person who changed the faith. To make it something never happened, never been said, is no Christian. So, if somebody, he have a wrong understanding of a verse in the Bible, God will not take him as somebody don't believe in him. Because still he believe in Jesus as God as Savior. All what he is saying, all what he is saying, those people they are saying, they will be punished in certain time. They have their own like, understanding for some stuff, which is not true. However, still, they believe in God. As he said in the Bible but if they understand and they try to find out how God will process our sin that is their problem but still they are believers this is not that will not destroy the faith it's not something essential about the faith no listen 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 that the faith is the faith is that Christ he came to save us and we have to repent and we are sinners if we promise to fight our sin and we believe in him, then we are invited to his kingdom. But we have to prove it. This is why he said, from their fruit, you shall know them. So let us say, there is someone from those Calvinists. He have a wrong understanding of the Bible about uh, uh, predestiny. Yes. But he have the fruits, which is the good of fruits for Jesus. The Messiah he knew that this person in heart he is good, even though he have a wrong understanding. But still he believe in him as God. He's not now changing religion. He's not changing his, uh, uh, you know, he have wrong understanding of certain verses. But those verses have nothing to do really with who is the Messiah and what he is for him. The second you teach that part. So if you say to me the Messiah is an angel, you are no Christian. If you say to me the Messiah is just a prophet, you are no Christian. If you say to me the Messiah was a created, you are no Christian. If you say to me, so you have to say something certain, you know, against the Messiah by nature and the Savior. And as an example, if you say he is not a crucified, then you are no Christian. Very simple. So there's things, there's things. If you break the line, you are not Christian. But number one, break the line is you acting opposite of what the Messiah say. So when the Messiah says, from their fruit they shall know them which mean if you believe in the messiah as your god and your savior you give the fruits of the messiah if you have understanding of a verse verse in the bible but that will not touch who is the messiah god is merciful he understand that you have limitation you got it wrong so he will not send you to hell but those people are wrong but they are christians they are christians okay so um, obviously, when I spoke to you yesterday as well, um, um, uh, Christian Prince, uh, you mentioned that, um, obviously, when I said to you that I kind of actually watched your videos and you said that uh, Orthodox, um, Catholics, Protestants, as long as they believe in the Messiah, um, they are Christians, No, correct? no. Orthodox, Catholic, uh, Protestant, the same as I just said to you, why we're repeating the same thing. I just told you the answer. doesn't matter what the church name. Yeah. 
as long as they believe in the Messiah, they believe in the Messiah. It doesn't, doesn't matter what the church name, my friend. doesn't matter what the church name. Anyone who believe in the Messiah, anyone who believe in the Messiah, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the crucifixion of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, the coming back of Jesus, the Savior Jesus, that nobody can save us except Jesus. That person is born again with the Christ. That person is a Christian. If he follow and do the step of the Messiah, if you don't, he's just a Christian by name, he will go to hell. So it doesn't matter what the church you go to. From their fruits, you shall know them. Correct. Yes, I, I fully understand that. Mm. Um, and and I, I believe in that as well. I think from your fruits, because, you know, in terms of what you actually do in this world, because, you know, this world is actually, you have to actually one day, and all of us going to die anyway. So I fully agree with that. Uh, with, with that, but it, but in one of your uh, videos, you said that you should get baptized. But if you're in your dying bed, and if you actually convey to God and say that, okay, uh, and if you don't get baptized, then you're still saved. You see, you okay, you okay. I will, I will tell you what I was saying. In the in the story of the Messiah in the cross, there is a person next to him. He believed in the Messiah. Yes. The Messiah, he promised him, you will be today with me in heaven. Correct. But he did not get baptism. Yep. Why? Because there's an exception. The person, first, he where he, he will go now baptize. He's in the cross, right? He's in the cross. He's dying. I mean, where where, where he will go? No, listen, listen, listen. Baptism, 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 baptism is a condition for someone. He is able to do baptism, as we said. You know, our God is not the God of ritual, and He is not the God of superstition. And he is always can going to support you by your act and your fruit. So if you can do baptism and you refuse to do it, that means you don't want to be Christian. But if there is no possibility, listen, if there is no possibility to do baptism and you die and you believe in the Messiah, you are Christian. Okay. So, but when you say baptism, it has to be through a church, right? You have to go to a church to get baptized. You can't baptize yourself. Does it doesn't matter. No, it's not about baptized by yourself. It's about, it's not about a church. You see, when the Christian, they started, there's no churches. There's not every single church. No, but, but, uh, but Jesus. My friend, listen. Okay, okay. okay. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Take it easy. So let us say you live in Saudi Arabia and there's not a single church there and not a single priest. A Christian brother who have he is well versed, he is learned, and God bless him with knowledge, he can baptize you. So he doesn't have to be a pastor or priest. I mean, where is the apostle? Where is you know what, what apostle? In Saudi Arabia is the apostle? Uh, I believe that there is some Christian over there. Yeah, secretly, uh, secretly. So you might find, but this is secretly. Um, and usually uh, it's hard to, you know, no, nobody would announce himself to say I am uh, a Christian uh, minister and have a church. You know, they do it in their closed houses, etc. Like uh, two years ago, the first time the Saudi, they have a Christmas celebration. First time ever, you know. So so when the, when the church is open, then people, they can go and get baptism legally, officially, and things will change. But for now, everything is done secretly. So get in baptism, depend on your condition. If there is a church is open and there is a priest to do it, why you want to go to me? But if there's nobody else and you might die tomorrow and you want to be baptized, you do it. Okay. All right. All right. So that actually answers that question. Um, and okay. So being, going back to my questions yesterday, you mentioned about um, Allah's destination, right? Uh, about you know, um, he forced um, Adam to actually sin Correct. forty years yeah. prior. Right? Uh -huh. Now, when I looked at a little bit um, into um, what I kind of actually just a little bit of a research as well. Like I said, you know, um, um, Christian friends, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not someone that actually knows a lot of things, but I just tried to actually just look at, um, especially your videos and. Um, and also, like, I mean, some of my, like, I mean, from, from, for yesterday, for example, I had to actually cancel the call because if I, because my computer is actually based in the hall. So, uh, and then my mom and sister actually came back over and 
they uh, and I spoke to them after that because they they were just uh, they're staunch uh, Muslims, you know. So um, I just don't want to um, speak to you when they're actually not around. So they are not around at the moment. Okay. So uh, I have a little bit of an opportunity to speak to you. So um, in terms of the uh, when I was actually looking at this uh, when Allah pre predestination about what uh, Moses said to uh, Adam and said that you sinned and you actually created this uh, this this problem for all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And Allah and Adam said that um, well, Allah actually destined for me forty years before. Now, what 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 I've actually researched is predestination and knowledge because you said that God always have knowledge on what is going to be happen, right? For each of us, right? He knows he knows what's going to be happening. You know, for example, you know, when you're going to die, the will to die. For example, if I'm going to be de uh, dead tomorrow, um, he knows that's going to be, um, it's going to happen. I can't kill myself today because he, he, even if I kill myself today, he knows that that's going to be happen, right? Correct? No. You believe it now? No. In your, in your religion, if you kill yourself, it is destiny from Allah to kill yourself. You didn't, it's not about knowledge. You see, you keep mixing between knowledge and destiny I mean, and knowledge is actually the same thing no 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 that's not true because you see if i write if i wrote your history which you should do there's a huge difference between writing your history with which i know as an example i can write now a, a book of history about someone like muhammad let's say i wasn't existing in his time and now I have the knowledge, Muhammad, he died yesterday. I decided to write a book. So now I'm not God, right? And I am writing about what I knew about him, history. Now you assume that your God, he knew the future. But that will not change anything. That means he is not involved in your action. But destiny is not like that. Destiny is you decide the action which will be done in the future. It's not about knowing. You are the one who decided. So the word knowing have no value no more because you are the one who decide what you will what he will do. Are you getting my point? Yes. It's like uh, it's like the it's, it's like making a machine, making a machine, and you know that this machine run by gas, and then when we turn the ignition, the fire will go in the engine, the the, the gas will be burning, the the burning gas will make the piston goes and run strong, and then you can push the gas more, and you lift the the, the brake, and the car will go. So I do not know, I do not know how to make cars. I know how car runs. Doesn't make me God. Knowing is not a destiny, but if I drive the car and I decide what the car will do from yesterday, I decide to throw this car in the river. Me, the car, she have no choice now, if we can call it she or it. And I decide to drive fast and then let the car go, go in the river. I decided for the car, the car is just an object. The car is not involved really in the plan. The car is just a car, and it's what your God doing. So your God, He decided for Adam what to do. Forty thousand, forty years, and by the way, in different places, Muhammad He says fifty thousand years. You know, so uh, uh, your prophet himself He contradict himself, and this is a clear sign of liars. Because if you cannot even maintain the numbers, how you can maintain the story? I mean, numbers are very fixed. You know what I mean? So you cannot say once. It was 40 years and different places, 50 or 40,000 years. There's a huge difference between 40 years and thousands of years. Yep, yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I know it's, there's, there's definitely a difference there. But, um, okay. Okay, so uh, the, when, when I actually did my research, I think pre, uh, I believe predestination and knowledge is um, the same. But you're, you're saying it's different, so... No, okay. knowledge, knowledge, my friend. Uh, focus with me. Knowledge is in the predestiny, but the predestiny is more important than the knowledge now because I decide your future. So you keep talking about knowledge. If I am the one who decide the plan, where you will walk, how you will walk, where you will stop, then you keep talking about knowledge. What knowledge? I decided for you. There's a huge difference between saying that he knew and I decided for you. You keep mixing between them. 
If I decide for you, if I decide for you, yes, then yes, yes, yes. then for sure I know because I'm the one who decide. So so the thing is, Christian man. So we don't actually see Allah, right? So we don't see God, even if um, you know Jesus is actually in in heaven at the moment as well, right? Um, and and he's uh, you believe that he's actually God, and I'm more inclined to actually believe that that's the case as well. Uh, but in saying that. It just seems to be very, uh, very similar between predestination and knowledge because, okay, I have a choice. Like, I mean, if I wake up today, if I want to eat, um, uh, you know, for example, I want to have a, a toasty sandwich or something. And then if I change my mind and say, no, I'm going to have porridge, for example. Of course, God knows that what I'm going to be doing, but I can still decide what I need to do. My friend, I don't know what are you, what are you talking about. We are talking about destiny have to do with sin. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see, you are talking about making a sandwich and making all. We are talking about Adam committed sin. And this is supposedly the reason for everything wrong. It started with Adam. Start with Adam. Listen, listen. Start with Adam. So if I am the one who made Adam commit sin, and then I decide to punish Adam for what he did, it's not about knowing. As you see, I'm showing the hadith now, different hadith saying that Allah, he wrote the fate of all creatures 50,000 years before he created them, all creatures, even a goat. So then in which... But this, but this seems to be knowledge though. No, no, you see, you keep mixing things. Fate, fate, my friend, fate is not knowledge. What's wrong with you? Fate is not knowledge. Fate is not knowledge. You know, when Allah, he wrote, Allah, he, he created a pen and he created a tablet. Is that true? Sorry, say that again. I'm sorry, I missed you there. According to Muhammad, the first thing Allah, he did when he created the, crea before the creation, he created a tablet and a pen. And then he told the pen to write the fate. So now the pen knows, because according to Muhammad, the pen is a creature. And the tablet knows, does that mean they are God? Because he is the one, the pen is the one who wrote the, 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 uh, the fate, and the tablet is the one who contained the fate. So how can we say now the pen is God, and the tablet is God, and Allah is God? So knowing the future is uh, something will happen automatically if I am the one who decides for you what you will do. And in this scenario, it's not important no more. What is important, the topic is, why you want to do that to me? Why you want to punish me for something I did not choose to do? Or even reward me? So reward and punishment should be done. If you do good, you know, you'll get rewarded. If you do bad, you will be punished. But based on the stupid destiny, you did not do good, Allah force you. And you did not do bad, Allah force you. So heaven and hell, is a stupid idea because simply, I mean, this God, he decided before he created us where we will go. Do you know the hadith about how Allah created the black and the white? You're talking about the left and the right shoulder? Yes. So now Allah, he, there is no black people yet and there's no white people yet. He hit the right shoulder of Adam. And from there, white of spring, like white ants came. And then he hit the left shoulder of Adam, and then black of spring, like circle, like ants, black ants, came from his shoulder, left shoulder. And then he said to the one who they came out from the right shoulder, you go to heaven, which means the white people. And those who came out from the left shoulder, the left shoulder, you go to hell, and I don't, I don't care. So now, where is justice that the black people will go to hell just because Allah decide that the black people will be created from the left shoulder? Look like your God, Allah, do not know something about balls, you know. So He think that uh, offspring is coming from shoulders, and He decide that white people are good, black people are bad, and white people go to heaven, and I don't care. Black people go to hell, and I don't care. What kind of what kind of uh, uh, god this god is? Yeah. Okay. So in in in, in the same instance, though, um, uh, Chris and friends. Um. So you know that now when Noah's got two sons, uh, Shem and Ham, right? Uh, 
What, what's the curse of ham, though? What does that mean? No, this is a prophecy about him. He will be bad. This is not about the black people. This is not about he did good. You see, you just mentioned something. The one who did good, he is good. The one who did bad, he will be bad. He prophesying. This is not even God saying that. This is the father. He cursed him. He's cursing his son. He's not cursing the black people. He's not cursing the white people. He is cursing an individual. And saying to him, because of that you are bad, your children will follow you. He prophesying about the future. But this is not about the black people. But the Mormons believe that uh, all of the black people are actually from this, uh, their knee their, their is actually from... No, that. you see, here we go. God, he cursed Adam and he cast him out of heaven. Is okay, all... Well, listen, well, listen, well. listen, 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 listen. Yeah. When yeah. God, he cast Adam out of heaven, this is God. When a man, he curse, uh, if I curse my son, does not make all his sons. I can say whatever I want. I am angry from him. I curse my son. I'm so angry from you. You made fun of me. But this is not God talking. This is a man who is angry. And this man himself, he did bad too. I mean, why he's drunk? Why he's naked? So... If you want to read a story, you see that the, the, the Jews, when they write, they write the story down about what, what they knew, they are just telling you the story as it is. But all of us, we knew that being a black or white have nothing to do with being good or bad. There's very disgusting white people and there's very disgusting uh, uh, other ethnic. So, but there is good white people. There's very good black people. There's very good Asian people. There's bad everywhere. There's good everywhere. There's good and bad in the same family. The story you mentioned to me, there's kids, they are, they have the same father. They are not black and white. They are about the children of a man. The same man. Not the two different ethnic. But if you decide to become racist, then you can make it about race. However, your prophet, by the way, say the same. Your prophet actually in the in in the in the in the in the in your Islamic books says it clearly why and that's why we are quoting this hadith allah created the black people from the left shoulder of adam why he chose the left shoulder left in religion specifically in islam mean evil right mean the good ones so why are people created from the right shoulder because they are the good ones black people they are created from the left shoulder according to islam because they are bad but all of us we knew this is absolutely false and your Quran says it clearly that even in the day of judgment, Allah will make the people two kinds of people, black and white. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, they, uh, obviously God pr uh, produces, um, I guess all of us are actually really different uh, in terms of our uh, ethnicity and our language. And I think... No, 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 no. Listen, listen. I'm talking about color. Yeah. Is it true? Okay. Allah will make good the Muslims who will go to heaven. All of them, they are white. And all non-Muslim black, yes or no? I don't believe in this. So you don't believe in the Quran no more? No, I don't believe in this particular hadith. This is not hadith, this is Quran. Uh, what I can see on your screen here, it's saying that um, Abdullah bin Amr. Uh, no, here we go. I, sh I just put the Quran for you. And there's tons of verses. Chapter 3, verse 106. Just waiting for it to be refreshed. Uh, one second, Chris and Prince. You can open your computer. You don't need to wait for me. You can just type in your computer. You know, open any Islamic browser for the Quran. I'm using QuranWalk.com. You can use the same if you want. So, in the Day of Judgment, Allah will make all Muslims white and all non-Muslims black. And this is not only verse, there's tons of verses. I can keep showing you until tomorrow. Interpretation, hadith, explanation, your prophet saying. But if that's the case, though, uh, firstly, it doesn't say all, it says some. No, no, no. You see, you see, my friend, you see, I, you see I don't know. You see, I, I try to speak to you as an adult. And don't and then, don't be yeah, upset okay. if I if I if I get upset with you. You know, I, I will I will consider you like my younger brother. Okay? okay. Don't be stupid, my friend. Do you see the word sum is between two brackets? 
which means obviously they are saying to you it's not even there. No, but the, but they have brackets in in the Bible as well, right? It's not even there. You see, anything is in the bracket is not there. If I no, add no. a bracket, it doesn't matter which book. Listen, you have my friend, my friend, my friend. Anyone he is, and if somebody translating, he want to add an idea to explain to you more. He he make a bracket, right? But this is not there. This is not original, which means it can be false. This is his. This is his word. This is his words. Any anything is not in the Bible. Is not in the Bible. Anything is not in the Quran. Is not in the Quran. If a man add things. All the brackets in the uh, Bible are actually not in the in the Bible, correct? Anything is obviously is added there unless it is a bracket to say like to, to make a quotation like he said this, she said that. There's a different. But if the bracket is addition, that's addition. And here we have the Arabic. Do you see any bracket in the Arabic? Of course not. Okay. Why there's no bracket? Because it says, The day that faces will become white and faces will become black. Now, just to show you that I am sure from what I'm saying, if we go to the chapter uh, uh, 82, Uh, oh, uh, sorry, chapter 27, verse number 82. This is 80, uh, This is 27. It's coming up now, one second. The chapter of the ends. And then we go to verse number 82. There is a beast Allah will send, and the verse saying, "وَإِذْ وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمَهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا لَا يُقِنُونَ What is the story here? Allah will send the beast, and this beast will have the staff of Moses, and the ring of Solomon, and will hit anyone who is a Muslim in his face, with the magical ring or the magical staff, Harry Potter, and then he will make you white read really carefully. This is the description of the beast. Its head like the head of a bull, its eyes like the eyes of a pig, its ears like the ears of an elephant, its horn like the horns of a stag, its neck like the neck of an ostrich, its chest like a chest of a lion, its color like the color of a tiger, it is hunches like the hunches of a cat. It is tail like a tail of a ram. It is legs like the legs of a camel. Between each pair of the joint, distance of a 12 a cubit. Now we have a very funny cocktail. The whole zoo became one animal. Now, it will bring out with it the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. And will, will no believer left. No believer left. Do you see it? No believer left. Without making a white spot in his face which will spread until his face is shining white as a result and there will be no disbeliever left without making a black spot in his face which will spread until all his face is black so do you see here some or it says none a believer left when then people trade in one another in a back place and they will say how much is this oh believer how much is this oh believer and the members of the own house will sit down together to eat they will know who's the believer. yeah so people now they will know each other by color this believers all of them they are black they are those are the bad people supposedly according to your religion and the good people they are the white one this is your god which mean no one will enter heaven unless he is white. Allah will make all the believers white. This is a reward. Black is not a reward. Black is a penalty. Yeah, but I, I believe um, when I uh, kind of actually research this as well, um, 
It's all about the light and the darkness. It's not about the same color, though. Our friend, do you see the word faces? Do you see this, the body? I mean, what are you talking about? What darkness? I mean, it's not, it's not physical. It's, it's um, metaphorical. It's where where do you get this from? It says it's a beast. His, he, it's a metaphorical. His tail is like the tail of a ram. It's a metaphorical that he have hinges like a cat. It's a metaphorical that, that it's... A, what metaphorical? It says a beast, my friend. Why you are adding things there? Does it say metaphorical or it says it's a beast? Yeah, but beasts, um, like I mean, human beings don't have tails. Right? Listen, it's a beast will come from the ground. Allah will send him. Where you are making things up? What it says metaphorical? Can you show me one Islamic cleric, even Muhammad saying it's metaphorical? The Quran says that he, the beast, will come. The, this is Quran. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Yep, I'm, uh, I don't have an answer for this. Listen, Abu Dawood said that he heard the message of Allah saying, read me carefully, a beast who said that the messenger of Allah said, do you see it? Um, just one second, Chris and Brent, I'm um, just refreshing my screen. Um, should be coming up soon. Is it coming to you? Uh, I'm just waiting. Uh, okay, Abu Huraira, um, may Allah be pleased with him. Okay, is that that one? Yes. Um, so, who is the one who said this? The Messenger of Allah. A beast will emerge from the earth. Did he say a metaphorical beast? Did he say the staff is a metaphorical? Why you Muslims you add things just to duct tape the stupidity of Muhammad? No, see, see, for example, Christian Prince, um, in Revelation. In, in My Bible, friend, that well, is, that the whole book is metaphorical. The, he did not say, he did not see reading. Okay. Listen, okay. the whole book is metaphorical there. And uh, and we Christian, we agree upon it. But you Muslim don't agree upon what you are saying. Not a single Muslim say this metaphorical. You see the difference? Oh, so all of the book of Revelation is actually metaphorical. It's a metaphorical for what will happen in the future. Yes. Oh, metaphorical what will happen you know do you do you think really there's a there's an animal have seven heads and etc this is not about animals this is a revelation about things will happen about b b bad evil things will happen so this is a book of revelation for metaphorical things will happen in the future is not about a, a physical thing we'll see a figure uh, when they happen we will notice that this is what the book is saying so this is all metaphorical here not a single Muslim for the last 14 century said this is metaphorical. A beast will emerge from the earth and it will be the staff of Musa and the reign of Solomon. A peace will be upon them. It will strike the nose of the believers with the staff and it will make the face of the believer bright with the ring. While the people gather to eat, they will be recognized believers from the um, disbelief. Okay, um, all right. I advise you, don't make things up. Otherwise, you, you will stay Abdul forever. At least, at least, if you want to make an eye or an opinion, you know, see what the Muslim believe. I mean, aren't you a Muslim like the rest of the Muslims? Are you creating a new religion? I'm not creating any religion. Okay, religions, so I'm do the Muslim believe this metaphorical? No. Did your prophet ever say, did your prophet ever say it's a metaphorical? No. No, see, uh, Christian Prince, there's, there's a difference between being a practicing Muslim and also... No, there's no different. There's no different. You see, we are talking about... No, 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 no. Listen, there's no there is no different because it's not up to you. It's not up to me. It's not about a, a practice or not practice. It's about what Islam is. This is a religion, it exists before you, and what it is, it is. It's not up to you practicing, not practicing. You guess as you wish, you make things as you wish, you know, you come up with an answer as you wish. It's not up to you. It's not up to me too. If Jesus said, this is not metaphorical, then it's not metaphorical. Who am I to say it's metaphorical? But where did um, you said um, the the book of Revelation is actually metaphorical? Where does John actually say that it's actually uh, metaphorical? My friend, if you read the stories, based on the story, every story will tell you if it's about something metaphorical or not. The story itself. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. The story itself. The story itself. Tell us what is the story. 
So when I read the text, the text either it says something obviously is not around us, obviously it's not exist physically, obviously it is not what he meant. You said here, the one. So here, you listen, one. listen. Here we have we have a description about a real physical animal coming from the ground. He have a staff of Moses. He have the ring of Solomon. Solomon is a real person. Correct? Yes, we believe so. Muslim believe he have a magical ring. Correct? It's not just Muslims, but Christians believe that. No, we don't. We, what, where, where are we Christian? We believe in the ring of uh, Solomon. Where is that? No, but you believe Solomon, uh, Solomon actually exists as well, right? Yeah, well, but we're talking about the ring. So we have we have a, a Musa, we have his staff. We have Solomon, we have his ring. And as you see, the ring will do you a job. Listen, my friend. Yeah, but we don't believe in a magical staff. We don't believe in Harry Potter. Musa is not ho holding a broom. broom. According to your prophet, this is a magical staff. No, when God, when Moses God, God, when Moses when Moses he throw the staff in the ground in front of the Pharaoh, yes. the staff changed into a snake. So yes. his magic overcome their magic. But what magic we are talking about? That because those people believe in magic, they don't believe this is a miracle. They see, oh, this magic, this guy he have a stronger magic. This must be magic. And this is how many now the Talmud as an example. They speak about Jesus. They, they hate Jesus. So in the Talmud, they say that the Messiah, the false Messiah, according to them, our Messiah is false. He went to Egypt and he learned how to do magic. So all the miracles of Jesus was nothing but magic. This is what the Talmud teach. But is that a true? But is that a true? Is that a true? It's no. I haven't actually um, looked at uh, the Jewish Talmud at all. Um, I've looked at the Torah and I looked at some of the uh, lectures from uh, Yusuf uh, Mesraki uh, and what he actually, obviously they believe in, in the Talmud, obviously we have uh, Jewish people in the world, uh, but you're bringing up Talmud, which I have no idea about what they actually say. My friend, this is not the point. I don't know what you are, what, how you're, you know, you are suffering from flight of thoughts. I'm showing you that people make things up. They make things up. So nowhere it says, Nowhere it says that there is somebody really can do magic. This is Correct. all all magic. Magic is a magic is a lie, and people who believe in magic they are a bunch of fool. So this is why the Bible have a severe punishment for it because people they abuse people, destroy their life, making you know because a naive person he will believe in magic. You can control him. He can change his life. He take your money. All those who do claiming they do magic, they want one thing: your money. They are scammers, and today there is different kind of magic. There is people who want to like until now. There is people they go in TV and they tell you. What will happen to you today? They open, uh, okay, you are born in which month? Which year? Okay, let us calculate. Oh, today, something wrong will happen to you. Be careful when you are driving your car. And all the stupid things. And people believe. People are stupid. People believe. So this is why we have to be vigilant. We have to be smart. The devil, he have many ways. If you are a person who believes in superstition, then your life, all of it will be about superstition. And this is what Muhammad came with. Muhammad believed that if somebody, he made a knot for you, knot, you know, with the rope, hmm? he make a knot and he blew in the knot, he can control it. Do you believe in that? All right. So before I actually answer that question, you mentioned something. Um, Do you believe in that? that? Do you believe in that? <laughs> you got to give me like just, just, just 30 seconds, not, 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 not even one minute. Hmm. So you said that all these things that happens in the world. So you don't believe in uh, star uh, horoscopes, Libra, uh, Aries, Taurus, uh, my friend, Libra, uh, my, my friend, uh, the, those uh, stars are exist. But somebody will tell you what from the stars, what will happen to you tomorrow? But isn't that superstitious though? This is stupid. I just told you this is stupid. So what? The, what? What is that? What are you telling me? No, but, but it happens in, in the Western world as well. Like, I mean, okay, this is stupid. So what? I mean, I just told you there's tons of donkeys. There's millions of donkeys. There's billions of donkeys. I just ask you, did your prophet say that somebody can blow in the nut and control you? Yes or no? No, he's not. No, he's not. Well, this is in the Quran. 
so okay um no no what's so okay you see you are you are all over the place you are all over the place and you are suffering from flight of thoughts and this is quran quran teach quran is simply a book of voodoo and stupidity and this is why muslim they believe in stupid thing let us let us show you here hmm. hold on okay, okay. we all need to switch the language hold on no hold on hold on you said no okay okay do i have a chance to actually just ask a few of my other questions as well wait would you give us some opportunities as well about what there's some um, some other questions because you know like i said I no I we did not finish this one because you are all over the place so in chapter 113 verse number uh, one two three four all of it is about voodoo all of it you said to me no he did not say that but this is quran so you seek refuge by Allah from those who blow in the knot. They do witchcraft and they can control you. This is Islam. This is superstition. This is stupidity. This is stupidity. We don't believe in such a garbage. Not only that, according to your religion, your prophet himself was controlled by somebody by taking hair from his body and Muhammad, he start acting stupid. Even he cannot have sex with his wives. He imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he was not. If we go in the hadith, you will see, and according to the story, your God Allah took him 12 months to take 12 knots on the Prophet. So the guy, there's a guy, he made 12 knots on him. And Allah, he is so good to fight magic to the point, took him one year, one month for every knot to take it off. So Muhammad, according to the story, he was under black magic for one year. And what happened in this one year? According to Islam, not according to me. Muhammad, even when he has sex, he is not having real sex no more. His life became a delusion or illusion. Read with me. The Prophet continued for such as such, imagining that he had done a thing, but in fact he did not. Um, I, I know I've seen I've seen your video about this particular hadith. As okay, well. so this is so superstition Islam is all over the place. Your God is a superstition God. Did you hear about if you enter the bathroom with your right foot, that Shaitan will play with your anus? Yes or no? Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, I know I know I'm having difficulties with this. Um, it is. It is quite. Um, I, I think because we live in a modern world now, um, I, I just believe that you know you got to be a good person. And you know, for example, you know, so, Chris, I mean, just if, if you don't mind, just me, um, just telling you something, right? For someone, for example, uh, a Muslim guy, right? So uh, I'm not saying me, but I'm just giving a bit more of an example. He he does his prayers. He doesn't actually harm anybody. He uh, he gives uh, money to charity. He goes around. He's not, you know, calling people nudges or or whatever. Uh, and he's he's just being a, a final, um, follow the law of the country that he actually lives in, and and treat everybody equally. You're saying this this person is actually a bad person just because he my friend he reads and my friend is, is that wrong? a Muslim is somebody who will not do any of what you said, because if you don't call me nudges, then you are not a Muslim because you reject the Quran. If you don't want to follow what the Quran is saying, your prophet he said, when you see a Christian in the road, which means force him to walk in the sewage. So if you are a person who is nice to the Christian, nice to the Jews, nice to the Hindus, nice to everybody, you obey a law which is not Islamic law, you are not a Muslim no more. So why are you considering yourself a Muslim? It's not about you. A Muslim is somebody, follow Islam. A Christian is somebody, follow Jesus. Very simple. A Christian is not somebody with a cross. Or even he is a priest. It's a person who do as Jesus said. So if you do as he said, love your enemy, forgive them, forgive the one who, you know, did wrong to you. Even when we pray, we say, uh, you know, uh, 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 Father, forgive to us the same as we forgive to others, which means in Christianity, in order to receive forgiveness, you have to learn first how to forgive yourself. Otherwise, you don't deserve to be forgiven. Why I want to forgive you, but you yourself, you don't even forgive people for less bad things to you. 
but the bad things you did to me as God, you want me to forgive you. So in Christianity, the first thing you learn, you forgive and you love. So if you are a person who don't want to hate the Christian and the Jews and to harm everybody around you, and you don't want to call them Najis, you don't consider them kuffar, you don't consider them bad people. So you don't agree with the Quran. The Quran says that the Christian, the Jews, non-Muslims are the worst of the creatures, the worst than animals, an am. Your God called them an am, which means animals. Your God called them pigs and monkeys. Your God called them Najis, dirty, filthy. So if I say to a Muslim, you are Najis, he will be upset. He will say, oh, you are discriminating me. You are, but uh, he said to me, it's okay for him. He doing it for me every day and it's okay for him. He never bother. Hey, though, uh, Prince, like, I mean, for me, like, I mean, say, for example, um, I live in Australia here. Uh, we had like, you know, a bushfire and everything like that. Um, we, we go out of our way to actually help all human beings, you know, like, I mean, okay, give them food, give them a little bit of shelter. Um, you know, like I mean, community. Um, you know, even like contributing like a bit of uh, cash, just to make sure, like you know, that human beings and and in the people that actually we are living in, in that particular country, uh, are well. We don't look at people's skin colors or. You are, you are not a Muslim. You are not a Muslim. You are not a Muslim, my friend. Because if you are a Muslim, if you are a Muslim, no, I, so, if you I, are a Muslim, you can do friend. you can do what you call good only right. only. Uh -huh. Listen, listen, you can do that according to Islam only if you want to fool somebody to convert to Islam. So let us say you see somebody is a homeless, but he's not a Muslim. You can come to him and offer him food and then you start telling him about Allah and his prophet. So, oh the, so listen, so the whole point is, is not about helping the person is about you. You you're being selfish. Islam is about Islam. Make you selfish. Listen, listen, I will tell you why. So a Muslim is promised. Yeah that if he made somebody convert to Islam, Allah will give him extra reward. So now the Muslim, he want to work hard to get more reward, more virgins, more boys. So he is not really caring for God. He care for his selfishness. He don't care for this homeless. He care for his selfishness. So even when you do good, it's not for good doing, for your selfishness. In Christianity, no. In Christianity, from their fruit, you know, then what does that mean? The Bible says, dead faith, have did the fruit, which means did the fruit or did the did, uh, did act. So if you have a faith, automatically you would do good. Not because God will forgive you for your doing good. No, not because God is watching and you want to show him how good you are. No, but because you are following Christ, you do good. And you don't even let people know. Even when you give with the right hand, you don't let your left hand know. This is what Jesus said. So in Islam is the opposite. In Islam, when a Muslim he pray, he have to go in the corner so everybody can see he's a good guy. I remember when I was a kid. Listen, when I was a kid, I, you know it was it was uh, winter time, and then the father of this kid who I'm visiting him his home, he opened all the windows, all the windows he opened them. He want to pray. It's cold. I mean, we have even the stove running, and he opened the window. I say, okay, maybe he is. Uh, I mean, the guy. What's wrong with him? He want to show all the neighbors that he is a praying. They go in the balcony to pray. I mean, the whole house is empty. They go in the balcony to pray. They want to show everybody. Jesus warned us. He said, don't be like the hypocrite who pray in the corners. So my friend, Islam, all of it is a scam from the beginning to the end. There's no worshipers. There's no believers. There's no people who believe in Allah. Even the Quran says, don't say we believe. Say we are Muslims. The Quran itself, Muhammad, he knew that nobody believed in him. He knew that. He said to them, it's okay, no problem. You don't believe in me, but don't say we believe. I know you are lying. Say we are Muslims. And actually, uh, Lili Dawa in his video, he mentioned that he quote for us the, the verse about, about those Bedouin who did not know, they, do not, they don't believe. They don't believe. He said to them, Okay, well, listen. So those people, the Prophet of Allah, he mentioned, they don't believe what, what the Quran says about them. And he quote the verse, those people who don't believe, Allah told them, uh, you know, don't say we are uh, uh, believers, say we are Muslims. And even he said that Andrew Tate, he is not a believer, but he's a Muslim. How you can be a, be how you can be a Muslim, but not a believer in Christianity? No. Islam is religion of hypocrisy, superstition, stupidity, and logic is, be, is, is minus 100. 
with the Christ, there's no bribe. If you give donation, if you give donation to Christian Prince, do you think he will go to heaven? No. No. If you give donation to Christian Prince and he was homeless, do you think that will make you go to heaven? No. You cannot bribe God, but you as a Christian, you do good for good is good and God is good. In Islam, no. In Islam, everything is about reward. Okay, when you do so anything, is not for the sake of being good, but, but for the sake of reward. Even when a Muslim, he prays his God. As an example, Muhammad, he says, if you say the name of Allah 100 times, Allah forgive your sin. What the heck? So you don't even say the name of Allah because you love Allah. You say the name of Allah for a benefit. Okay, so um, Christian Prince, so it's basing on your uh, particular example as well. So um, obviously you've heard of uh, Mother Teresa, right? So she spent all of her life in India trying to look after orphan kids. Uh, who? 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 Being good. who? Uh, Mother Teresa. What does this have to do with my topic? Well, it's, it's about doing good. Like, I mean, she doesn't okay, my friend, my friend, listen, listen to me. I mean, don't, don't be, don't be a kid for the sake of. I mean, I'm losing my patience with you, Mother Teresa. Me, doesn't matter who. In Christianity, we don't do good because we want to go to heaven. We do good for we are Christians, and if you are a Christian, you do a good act. So it is not because you need to go to heaven. It's not because if you do this, you go to heaven. Why you are not listening? It's not because I am feeding. Why, why are you mentioning Mother Teresa now? What does she have to do with me? No, I'm talking about doing good works. No, I mean, you are getting it wrong still. This is not about going to heaven. It's not, it's, this is not what Christianity teach. Christianity teach you, the second you become a Christian, you do good automatically. Your mother, your name is Mother Teresa, your mother, your mother Monica. It doesn't matter what your name good have nothing to do with going to heaven good have to do with being christian so how the messiah he knew that you are a christian by your fruits but the fruits is not something you are doing if you are doing it just to go to heaven you got busted you will not because now you are fake now you are trying to by god fool god and let me add good you know just to show you it's a show time no if you do it from your heart, that means you are a good follower of Christ. From your heart. Not because he promised me heaven and I want to go to heaven. No, I will do it. Even now I am in the door of heaven. I will go out of the door of heaven and help somebody. Because Christ told me, I was a stranger, you took me in. I was hungry, you fed me. I was sick, you came to me. I, I was uh, 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 the, 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 the disciple. They said to him, Lord, when we did this, those things to you? When we did any of those things to you, he, he said, when you did it to my brothers, which means anyone, you are doing it to me. So you need to learn how to love so you can be Christian. If you are a person who do good just because you want to save yourself, you did not learn how to love. You love yourself, you are selfish. You don't belong to Christ. Christ and selfishness are enemy. Enemy. So, for God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. What does that mean? No selfishness. Our God have nothing to do with selfishness. And whoever want to follow our Lord, he have to forget about selfishness. Otherwise, we are the same as any pagan one in the world. We worship ourselves. We claim we believe in God. But the reality is, we only care for ourselves. So when I seek salvation, I seek love before salvation. For love is salvation, not the opposite. Which means, if I am seeking God with my love, not because God will give me salvation, then I deserve to be in his house. If I call my father because he's rich, He's rich. Hey, hello, Dad. How are you? I want to come to see you every day. Come to see him because he's rich. But if my father is wise, he will know that the son is not really interested in me. He is interested in my wealth. One day I'm going to die. He will inherit me. God is not your father. 
He knew exactly what kind of a person you are, what you are doing. He knew what you had in your heart. You cannot lie to him. You can lie to your father in, in real life, but you cannot lie to, 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 to God. So he knew exactly what is the purpose of your act. So when you pray to him just to be hypocrite, oh, don't punish me, you know, don't send me to hell, you know, please, you know, okay. That means you don't, you don't love him. You just live in fear. And Islam is based on three things. Fear, motivation, which is temptation, and superstition. So Muhammad, he installed fear in your heart. And then he give you motivation in the same time. Virgins, boys, gold, silver, money, seven heavens, you know, two heaven, one is made from gold and one made of, 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 of silver. Uh, and you have two spring of water and uh, endless river of uh, uh, wine, endless river of milk, and the rivers of, of honey. All of those are motivation of the fool. They don't love God. They love the material. This is why the material is there. It's like the, 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 the cave of Alibaba. He show you what he have in his cave. So if you join my gang, you get this. The difference is Alibaba's story, maybe if he exists one day, maybe he have some jewels. Allah don't, is a fake name, is a fake God, does not exist. It's a it's an empty promise, as nobody saw, nobody knows, nobody know where. It's just an empty promise. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. And just, just to be just to be 100 percent clear because obviously i'm a human being all of us are human beings we do a lot of uh, mistakes in our lives um and i am not trying to be argumentative for trying to say that i'm right i'm not right i'm i'm definitely a sinner like i mean i've maybe i've done a lot of wrong and that's what allah says to me and says that you always want to try to repent and ask for forgiveness right so now Okay, hold on. You see, I, I have to stop you. I have to stop you. What is the point of forgiveness if he is the one who made you commit sin? I mean, the, stup the stupid idea here is beyond stupidity. Because if I made you commit sin, why in the world I'm asking you to, to, to repent? Repent from what? So I made somebody rape somebody, and then I asked the rapist to beg me for forgiveness. But I am the one who made him do that. Well, okay, but, but you're only referring to the Muslim community, though, Christian Prince. My friend, my friend, uh, we are okay. talking about Islam. We are talking about Islam, not Muslim community. There's nothing about Muslim community. All of you are a bunch of people. All of you are a bunch of hypocrites. None of you follow Islam. And that's not the point. The point is we're talking about Islam. You keep talking about Muslim community. You keep telling me about your dad, your mom, your sister. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about Islam. Don't mix. Islam is a religion. It's not a person. So if Allah is the one who made you rape a woman, and then Allah, he is so merciful, he will forgive you if you beg him. How stupid is that? He is the one who made you rape the women. He should be asking you for forgiveness, not the opposite. He should say, please forgive me. It's my fault. It's me. I was playing games with you. I am the one who made you commit sin. When Adam, he been forced into sin. Shouldn't Allah apologize to Adam then? It's not the opposite. It's not Adam should ask God to forgive him because if Allah is the one who forced Adam to do it, why in the world Adam should ask Allah for forgiveness? Adam is the victim, not the opposite. So if I'm seeking the truth, can I actually ask you a few questions about you? Know, some of the some of the things that you actually say kind of actually make sense to my mind. Like, I mean, I'm obviously um, looked at some of your. Uh, questions uh, and your your answers and kind of actually a little bit of some of them actually make a lot of sense to me but there's just a few things that uh, if can i actually clarify? do you agree with me before before we go to the second question do you agree that the one should uh, 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 ask for forgiveness is allah no I, I believe everybody could ask for forgiveness even even somebody okay for example if if uh, if somebody says okay I, I I want Jesus to come into my heart and I believe in the Messiah. You are not listening. You are not listening. Okay. I just said, Allah, he made Adam commit sin. So who is the one should ask for forgiveness, Adam or Allah? And I, like I said to me, uh, to you yesterday, maybe yesterday I was a little bit confusing. Uh, I probably didn't have the answer. I, I don't have an answer for that particular hadith. 
I'm not talking about hadith now. I'm talking about we, all the reference I showed you. It's about one hadith now. I mean, we have about the baby. We have about uh, 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 the, the, the verses in the Quran. We have tons of reference we showed you. All of them says it's Allah. Even the Quran speak about your destiny. Allah wrote your fate. So now, if Allah, he made me commit a crime, why I should ask Allah to forgive me for what he made me do? Because he's a Rahman Rahim. What Rahman Rahim? What kind of Rahman Rahim is that, guys? I mean, this guy is merciful. Merciful for what? So he, if he is merciful, will not make me do sin. He forced me to do it, and now he will forgive me. And I have to beg him. I mean, do you see the, crazy, the madness? So we have a stupid God. He forced you to rape a woman. And then you pray to God, please forgive me, Allah, forgive me. You know, but it's, but I, he is the one who made you do that. He should apologize. He should apologize from you and from the women. And you said to me, he's all merciful. Okay. Well, okay, no, don't tell me okay. Give me the answer. If I force you to rape a woman, if I put a gun in your head and I say, rape her, I will kill you. If you don't rape her, I will shoot you right now. Who is the one should ask for forgiveness? You or me? Okay, can I give my answer on that particular point? Okay, so you, you mentioned this yesterday, and I know where you're coming from and saying that Allah actually forced us to actually do things, right? Now, when I can, my first um, conversation with you uh, just with today, I believe that predestination and knowledge is the same thing, but you said no. It's doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing, not the same thing. We'll have to change anything. <laughs> will not change anything the, the, the important is the destiny the knowledge is not important your god know nothing if your god know anything he will not say that the the, the, the the sperm coming from the backbone of the man and the sperm coming from the ribs of the women and he will not say the sunset in murky water and he will not say that hail coming from mountains and he will not say that the earth is a flat and he will not say that god you know he said in a in, you know like a, a carried by by a, by a rooster and he will not say all the stupid things so this is not what we are talking about Destiny is you have no freedom, knowledge, no mean nothing. You are just acting like you are just acting like a fool, as if I said nothing to you. Who care about the knowledge? Who care about the knowledge? Let us say there's a new machine can read tomorrow future. Can we call it God? No. Can we blame the machine for knowing the future? No. But if the machine decide your future, then this machine is your enemy. It's not your friend. For that machine is controlling you and forcing you to do things. So I keep repeating myself, and you keep going back to zero, as if you are high taking heroin or cocaine. Are you high? I just don't think that's a nice thing to say to people, though. <laughs> Well, why you keep going to zero? Who care about the knowledge? Destiny is he is forcing you to do something. This is the important. He is forcing you to do something. Okay, he's forcing all of us to do sins, right? That's, that's the way. So, who is the one should be repenting? Me or Allah? Let's say, okay, let's say in... in um, Don't tell me, let's say, either he did or no. Either you say, I agree. Obviously, Allah is forcing us, or you say I'm not convinced. Don't say, don't say to me this is. Let us say after speaking to you all those hours. Let us say. Okay. Okay. Now I'm convinced. Okay. You. Okay. I am convinced. That okay. So Allah, now you are convinced. Allah, He forced us to commit sin. Who is the one should ask for forgiveness? Me or Allah? It may be the case that if He has actually forced us to do something. Um, then there's no reason for us to ask for forgiveness because it kind of doesn't make sense. Still you aren't answering. Who is the one should ask for forgiveness? The one who forced me or the one is forced? Well, the one who actually forced us. Exactly. Um, the there's one... no reason for us to actually ask for No, forgiveness. this is not I'm talking. Listen to me. You are trying to... You are dodging my question. If I force you to commit sin, am I guilty or not? You're talking about yourself or you're talking about the if I force you to commit sin, am I guilty or not? 
Of course you're guilty then. Allah is guilty then. Allah is the devil. Like I said, I have, I have, I have a, a few questions, um, Christian Prince. But why you don't want to agree with me that Allah is guilty? You're being quite um, nasty with me because I actually... Why you don't want to agree that he... Just you just said, if I force somebody to commit sin, I am guilty. And you don't want to say, yes, Allah is guilty. And now both of us, we agree that Allah, he is the one who forced you to commit sin. So why you don't want to say that Allah is guilty? No, see, for example, I taught that predestination and knowledge is the same thing. I said to you before. It doesn't matter. You keep repeating the same thing. Are you, are you, are you, are you my friend? I'm not being nasty with you. You're just being a child, kid. You are repeating yourself. I thought, I thought, I thought. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Knowledge mean nothing. Knowledge, knowledge mean nothing. The important in the topic is destiny, forcing you, planning for you, to do things without your free will. So when you do wrong, it's not your wrong. And now you will take the mic and you will say to me, we're well, listening to you for the last blah, 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 blah. And I thought the knowledge is the same as the destiny. And you go back to zero. You don't want to say, and you don't want to admit, you don't want to admit that Allah is the evil doer. He is the one who's harming a human being playing them, setting them up to do sin, so he can be asked for to please forgive us. He's enjoying it. Okay, so I will not I will not mention predestination equals knowledge again, okay? I will not say that again. This is I not the issue. Yeah, you are not listening. Yeah, like, I say, like I say, I say, I agree with what, what, what you're saying, okay? Hmm. Let's just put it that way, okay? Because I, I told you beforehand, I'm actually looking for the truth, right? But at the same time, do you mind actually uh, letting me ask a few questions? I'm not sure how long you're going to be available. I know it's been quite a while when we actually having this chat, but... I am available. Uh, if I, you see, I'm just being, I'm asking the Lord to give me patience. Sometime, okay. sometime I'm out of it. And I, obviously you are making me really upset because I keep repeating okay. myself, you know? Yep. And you don't want to listen. I don't know why. Uh, but the, 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 the but 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 in order for us, my friend, sad. In order for us to continue, we have to clear a point which we are discussing about for the last two hours, maybe. Okay. Is Allah guilty or not? Based on what you are saying, and based on the uh, your knowledge on obviously because you you have a degree in Islam, and I'm not. I'm just a layman. I go to work every day, and obviously you know more than me. Uh, so, uh, based on your understanding and your uh, uh, evidence that you've actually provided, I believe that what you said is uh, uh, maybe it is it is already apparent to be true. Okay. This is not uh, my question. I, this is not my question, and I don't care about my degree. I don't care about my knowledge. Based on what you, my friend, based in the evidence we gave you. Let us say I have zero de degree, zero knowledge about Islam. I gave you evidence. I put it for you in the front of your screen. So, based on those, based on based on what we provide. So, is Allah guilty, or he is not? Based on what I showed you, not based on the Christian prince. I know you are knowledgeable. Who care about knowledge? Maybe my knowledge is stupid. Maybe I'm wrong. Based on what I showed you from your books, not from my head. Based on that. Is Allah guilty if he is the based one who on force that, based on that I like I mean it's not me to judge the supernatural because God is God right I I'm I am not in a position to actually judge anybody I'm not a judge but based on your evidence like I said to you uh, I believe that you whatever you are saying make makes a lot of sense so are, do we agree do we agree that Allah yes. is guilty like I said I'm not a judge what do you mean, not a judge? I can't, I, can't judge I can't judge you. I can't judge my. I can't judge my cat. I can't judge anybody because I'm. I'm just a layman. I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm just. So what? So what? What? What this conversation is about? To talk about potato and tomato? No. Why we cannot judge? Why we cannot judge? Why we cannot judge? Isn't it life? All of it is about judge. Isn't it all life is about? If I'm across the street, you look where the traffic light is good for you. Otherwise, a, a car will hit you. All life is about judgment. I'm not asking you to act like God. I'm asking you to judge what is good for you, what you think, what you understand. 
So based, based in what we heard, is Allah guilty or not? Do you want me to say the worst and say that Allah is actually guilty? I don't want you to say anything. I want you to give me the opinion. Either you say yes, is guilty. I already gave you my opinion. I said that you are very knowledgeable and, and no, this is not. Is. This is not the question. I'm not asking you to praise me and to give me a certification for my degree. Thank you. I'm not applying for a job, my friend. I am asking you, based on what we said, do you agree that Allah is guilty? <laughs> keep coming back to the same question okay because there's no point of continue talking there's no my friend there's no point there's no point if we don't reach an agreement about a very simple basic thing so all this time we are talking about what then we are wasting our time so allah he forced allah he forced a woman to be a whore allah forced a man to be a pimp allah forced a man to be a, a, a thief allah forced adam to commit sin Allah forced me to go online and speak about Allah. Allah forced me to make fun of Muhammad. Allah forced me to write books about Muhammad. And then Allah will punish me for he forcing me for doing all those things. Who is the guilty then? Be honest with yourself. All right, he may be. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, sad. I will give you. I will give you. I will give you some time to think about the question. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Usually, I go almost every day. You know, I don't have four wives, as you know. I have only thirteen. And when I finish dishes, I go live on air. So call me next time and tell me. Give me the answer. The first thing we will talk about you. You promise me. The first thing we will talk about. Do you agree with me that Allah is guilty? Because I cannot continue with you. You see, I'm a person who is into details. And I want to know in which stage me and you now in this conversation are we in zero or you get something from me you learn something you yeah. get, understand something I want to see yeah. that so take your time if I come if the Lord is you know keep me alive I will be it uh, here tomorrow or maybe the day after and then you call me and say okay Christian Prince I have a conclusion about what we spoke about either you say to me Allah is guilty or not before you go I want to show you this hadith okay. According to your prophet, he says, by the one whose hand my soul speaks, swearing by Allah, if you were not to commit sin, Allah would replace you with people who commit sin and then seek forgiveness. So what, why Allah will destroy us if we don't commit sin? Sad. What do you think? What's wrong with this God? He's unhappy. He's unsatisfied. And my soul is where you are not commit. Uh, where you not commit sins, Allah will replace you with the people who would commit sins, and then seek forgiveness from Allah, and then Allah would forgive them. Hmm. So you would forgive them. This is this is what you care for now. You don't care. You don't care. You don't. You don't care. You don't care for the evil. The evil. He just said something evil. He just said if you don't commit sin. He will destroy you. This is evil. So now he is saying, you better do sin and beg for forgiveness. Otherwise, you're bad. That is the most stupid thing ever. So imagine we have 1,000 men and women. They are so beautiful, nice, kind people to each other. They never commit sin. The man, he sleep with his wife only. The wife, she sleep only with the husband. The man never lie. The wife never lie. The man, he never cheat. The man never steal. The woman, she never do anything wrong. And now, perfect people, amazing. Allah will destroy them. What kind of God this God is? I thought, if you do bad, he will be punished for the bad. Muhammad is saying to us, who is Allah? And this will summarize all our video today. Allah is a scumbag. He is an eco. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a person, selfish. He just wants to see people begging, please, Allah, please forgive me, please. Even if you don't do wrong, you will, you will not beg for forgiveness. He's bored. He's abusing us. We are just like toys for him. He needs us to commit sin so he can be happy. You don't commit sin, Allah is upset, that means Allah is the devil. 
Our God is the opposite. If you do wrong, God will destroy you. If you do wrong, here, the opposite. If you do good, I swear by Allah, Allah will destroy you all. And he will bring a bunch of scumbags, pimps, hookers, drug dealers, rapists, child molesters. All what they need to do, make a city and do all kind of ugly stuff and then beg Allah for forgiveness. The story is over. See you next time, Saad. All right? All right thank you. Take thank care. You, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Did we summarize to you guys what Allah is? Do we agree that Allah is the devil? The truth about Allah. Allah is evil. Allah is someone opposing our God a billion percent, not 100%. Muhammad, he copies stories from the Old Testament and from the New Testament, but those oppose what he is saying. Why, why God punish people who, people of Noah then? Or just because they did not ask for forgiveness? Maybe they did not do good then, they did not do bad. Is that why he destroyed them? Muhammad is a person who is really sick. He's encouraging his people to do sin. Just ask for forgiveness. And he blinded them with tons of rituals. Go around the Kaaba, touch the black stone, kiss the black stone, swearing by Allah that whoever kissed the black stone and touched the Yemeni corner, Allah will erase his sin for touching stones. You see how easy it is? Go, go. Go do anything you want. Just say 100 times, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, 100 times. Each time you say it, Allah will give you 1,000 deed. Erase your sin. Look how easy it is. Look how the solution come. You cannot do that with Jesus. You go rape a woman, and then you say to me, praise your Jesus, praise your Jesus 100 times. What a scumbag. What kind of religion this religion is? And then the pagan Muhammad, he could not forget about his roots. Where touching stones will erase your sin. Those are the stones of Allah. The black stone is the vagina of Allah. The Yemeni corner is the stones from the temple of al makka which is the temple of the moon. Abu Abdurrahman, why do I only see you touching these two corners? He said, I heard the messenger of Allah say, touching them erases your sin. Touching stones erasing sin. And not only that. The Arab in the old days, when somebody commits something bad, he frees slaves. Because they knew slavery is wrong. Muhammad, he said to them, don't free slave no more. Go around the Kaaba seven times. It's the same as freeing a slave. Do you see it? Go and circumambulate yourself around the Kaaba seven times. It is the same as a free and a slave, so nobody free slave no more. Love from Indonesia, my friend. Thank you very much. I love Indonesian people, and I pray to the Lord that all the people of Indonesia they will live in peace, and they will flourish, and Islam will be demolished. Indonesia is a beautiful country, deserve better than the garbage of Muhammad. Did we learn something good today? 
I stay with you every day many hours. Please don't cheap and leave a comment. Don't be cheap. I mean, do I deserve from you? Speaking, speaking every day. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sometime eight hours. Do we deserve from you a comment? We are not asking you for donation, a comment. Donate a donate, donate a comment. Can you? I stay with you from my life, from my health. Make me feel that you people care. Donate a comment. It doesn't cost you ink. You are so good in the chat. The chat is coming like rain, but in the comment, nobody is commenting. Few people. I want to see thinkers. I want to see Christians. I want to see Muslim thinking with us. I want to see intelligence. I want to see decency. And don't appreciate me. Appreciate the Lord. For he gave me the time and the opportunity to speak to you. It is him who is helping us. And remember the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. Many of us, we sit in the front of TV all day long. We never do anything. We are just enjoying our life. But this is not a joy. This is not a joy. The joy is to see someone like sad, even though I'm losing my throat, he's burning my blood, to see him tomorrow or the day after or a week after or a year after, saying to me, I want to accept the Messiah as my Lord and my Savior. That is the joy, which cannot be compared by anything. Even the Bible says, a happiness in the kingdom of God will be, for one soul is saved. This is how much God, he loves you. This is not about me, my friend. Those who think of themselves, they lose themselves. Those who give themselves, they win themselves. Read the Bible, for it is the book of God, the wisdom. Our God do not need a dish of wisdom to be installed in his chest. Our Lord, the Messiah, is the Lord of wisdom, is the Lord of the truth. And when he said, I am the truth, I am the way, I am the life, I am the resurrection, he proved it. He had power over death. He had power over all kind of illness. Even the Muslims in their video, they say that the Messiah, he used to wave his hands and thousands of people are watching and all of them, they will get healed. Just waving his hands. He did what? He waved his hand. That is my Lord. He made the blind see. He made the dead talk and walk. He gave life. For he is life. And when he said, whoever believe in me and die, he will live. Trust his promise. Trust his promise, for his promise is true. Thank you all for being here. This is your brother Christian Prince who is serving you humbly for today. If you are a Muslim, you like to debate me, you have a sheikh, you have a scholar, feel free. I will be happy to have you, and to have your sheikh. The bigger he is, the better the debate will be. And victory will be not for me or you. The victory will be for the truth, and the truth will set you free. The word and the wisdom of my Lord. God bless you all.